Hi, today I'd like to talk about hierarchical condition categories. And why are they important to understand? They're important because today it will help you maintain your relationships with third-party payers and in the future allow you to optimize your revenue stream. Risk adjustment is designed to calculate the relative risks an insurer will be exposed to when insuring the health care of an individual. Risk adjustment based upon diagnosis codes is designed to ensure the payments made to insurers over a specified period, usually a year, will reflect the insurer's monetary exposure for the care of that patient. To do this, diagnosis codes are assigned to hierarchical condition categories, also referred to as HCCs. Each hierarchical condition category is assigned a value that reflects the relative risk associated with the condition the HCC covers. For example, HCC 17, diabetes with acute complications, has a value of 0.318 assigned to it. This value will be combined with other HCC values that reflect a total picture of an individual's health care state in order to come up with a risk adjustment factor that will be used to aggregate a payment that corresponds to the severity of a patient's illness or illnesses. Again, risk adjustment allows CMS to pay private insurers for the risks associated with insuring Medicare beneficiaries. There are more than 9,000 diagnosis codes that are assigned to 80 HCCs. There are about 4,000 diagnosis codes assigned to 75 prescription HCCs. Let's take a look at how the risk adjustment factor is calculated and see how it impacts future payments to the insurer. Steve is a 71-year-old male with diagnoses of 1. congestive heart failure, 2. morbid obesity, 3. rheumatoid arthritis, 4. alcohol dependence, and 5. major depression. The following risk adjustment factors apply to Steve. Because Steve is 71 years of age, lives in the community, and is non-dual, only on Medicare and not Medicaid also, he gets a risk adjustment factor of 0.379 for these characteristics. Congestive heart failure is covered under HCC 85 with a risk adjusted factor of 0.323. Morbid obesity is covered under HCC 22 with a risk adjusted factor of 0.273. Rheumatoid arthritis is covered under HCC 40 with a risk adjusted factor of 0.423. Alcohol dependence is covered under HCC 55 with a risk adjusted factor of 0.383 and major depression is covered under HCC 58 with a risk adjusted factor of 0.379. Adding the specific risk adjusted factors together, we come up with an aggregate risk adjusted factor for Steve of 2.176. If the CMS capitated rate for Steve's geographic location is $800 per month, CMS, without the risk adjusted factor being calculated, would pay the insurer $9,600 a year for enrolling and insuring Steve's health care. After the risk adjusted factor is calculated and factored, the CMS payment will be $20,889.60. That's right, $20,889.60 instead of the $9,600. A big difference. So you can see why correct diagnosis coding and medical record documentation is so important to the insurer. So why is this important to you? As a physician, you are probably on managed care panels. Most of these panels are full and most managed care companies are not taking more physicians on to see their patients. So, you want to maintain your relationship with the managed care companies. If you are not on their panels, you cannot see their patients. 
That hurts the revenue stream. Since managed care organizations are accountable for the accuracy of the diagnostic coding of its participating physicians, managed care organizations will review physician data to identify troublesome coding patents. This may result in the managed care organization auditing the physician. Now, audits are expensive and disruptive, but that is not the extent of your exposure. The fact that an audit is being done can result in the physician being terminated from the managed care organization's panels. Again, if this is done, you will not be able to see the managed care organization's patients. A negative for the physician and physician's office. So it is important to ensure that you and your staff do diagnosis coding accurately and correctly so that it complements the medical record. This will optimize the ability to produce an appropriate risk adjustment factor for each patient. Well, I hope this helps. Have a good day.